so 979. So hello, my name's Ellis, and I'm with the Brown Brad Guitars here, and I'm just finishing off, kind of winding this uh, strap pickup. There's 8,000. I think that's what we're going to go for on this last pickup here. Hello. Um, this pickup, I'm going to shut that off. I've got 8,095, so that's a little bit more. I wanted to stop right at 8, but uh, what the heck, right? Um, this is to uh, kind of feature this, this pickup winder that we made. Um, the, the paper is so that I can see this because we're using this really dark vintage wire and here's, here's some pickups that we've already done. This one's actually even been potted even though it looks super clean. Um, but we're using this uh, pickup wire. It's the 42 gauge enamel and it's the Shatton vintage coil wire. I noticed that everyone else was using the copper stuff but this said vintage coil wire and, and that and so there you got it. Um, if I wanted to I could take theirs off you know but I don't I don't think you know that's gonna really we're gonna we're gonna check it and actually, we've done these two pickups. This is for a strat that we're building, a, a new strat for me. And you'll see I have a stack of strats over here, so that's all I really needed was another one. But I really like this one that I'm building. So this one has 75, uh, 34 wraps, and it checked out at 5.67, 5.6 which is, and we're going to use this for a neck pickup. We put this little safety wrap on. This has been potted, it's soldered and everything. And then here, I believe this one's going to be the bridge. This one's going to be the bridge pickup. And I forget, what, what is it? It's the, uh, it's 6.5. So we have a 6.5 on that, which is right about it. We got these specs off Eric Coleman's video where he wrapped a, a, a middle pickup for a, a 1960 Strat. So what he had was in the bridge on that 19, it was a 63, beautiful sunburst Strat, 1963 Strat. It was a 6.3 in the bridge. We have a 6.5. In the mid, he had a 6.2 is what he wound. And then the neck on that guitar was a 5.7. And so this is our neck at 5.67. So, boy, that's pretty close. So, and that was the, the guru, Eric Coleman, for, for Stu Mack doing that. Okay, here's the wire right here. And I'm going to put this back away. I have to say, you know, I was very, this is our first wind. And we were actually able to do it without breaking um, you know breaking this this super thin I you know you don't even want it. it's like a hair and I, I have to say there was a lot of anxiety at first in this whole thing because first I built this flippity gibbet here and then you know of ordering all this this the coil wire still is fairly expensive you know going from like 40 to, to 50 bucks for just these little spools that are supposed to only like go for six pickups, so you know the market, the they're they're selling a Mojo Tone and Stu Mac and everyone's selling it, you know, kind of a hobbyist market or a do-it-yourself market. They're still making a bunch of money, so I think the best you can do is probably get a pickup as a kit from them on something uh, for like half price. You know, a set of Lindy Fralins or a set of the high dollar whoever, um, and a lot of people do their pickups, are, are doing and selling pickups. Uh, Vaughn Sko, he's another good guy, and uh, they're expensive. So the, the best you could probably hope for it is about half price. So it's not really all that great. But so this was uh, built as like out of necessity. Um, 
I, I had just, we had just finished a bunch of these big, beautiful arch top guitars. Um, this is still, this is kind of a mat down. It's just, that has a little buff just because I wanted to see a little bit of it. But this is a, uh, you know, a carved spruce top. It's off a Benedetto body, which would be like an L5 body. On this particular guitar, though, I built three of these at the time, and one of them over here, I'll, I'll pop it out, on, or it's over there, I'll drag it in real quick, is a true Benedetto, built to his video and prints and all this. This one, I put parallel bars in it, like such, and that's why I didn't want to cut a hole here for it. It also, this one, the scale and the set of the neck is different because I copied the blueprint off Don McRosty's 59 Les Paul Custom, you know, that I have the blueprints for. <laughs> and uh, so this is a Les Paul neck, or, or this this neck is the, off that 59 Custom uh, specs, the, the neck. And I had to join it here, so everything kind of shifted like this, you know, the, the, if it was a longer Benedetto, then the bridge could have gone down here a little bit more to about maybe right there. But anyways, you can see where we're going with this guitar. And, and it's all, you know, hand carved. Uh, this is American broadleaf maple, good stuff. And this is a, uh, some kind of spruce my dad sent me. So from Idaho, so I don't really know what it is. And he's passed away since, God bless you. And thank you, Lloyd. Um, but anyways, we didn't have enough room on this set for a pickup. And this is a Von Sko thing. So he did it on a K and I picked up on it. So what I did was take apart a P90, an old dog-eared P90, took the bars off the back. And actually, it's kind of funny because this is um, really a uh, Seymour Duncan. And I think that when I measured this, this was a hot P90, and I, I remember, oh boy, we like that thing. I had it in the uh, net position on a Telecaster, and we're like, boy, that sounds good. I think it's 12K, which is pretty hot. But P90s are a completely different beast uh, because they have the screws, they have bar magnets, completely different beast. But what we did, took all that away, just have the bobbin and we drilled these out so you can drill this out yes we can <laughs> and I put I, and you cut the bar magnets to fit flush and these are Alnico 5 like strap pickups and then of course we magnetized them and blah 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 and now this can go in here and this will have the whole vibe of, of, I see, you can see where it's coming, of a 1940s, like Gibson style arch top. It's got the nice thing here, uh, and a roller bridge that we put on it and did, we made all this stuff. Oh, we didn't make that, of course, that's thanks to Mr. Paul Bigsby. But anyway, so that's what this goes. Thank you, Von Sko. And you're, you're kind of helped inspire all this. And uh, yeah, so there we go. I haven't done this yet, and I gotta make the pit guard. But anyways, that's a bit of that. This guitar, so it's not quite, it's, it's like an eighth thinner than a Benedetto. But I was making a series of these arch tops, and then I kind of strayed on this one. I, I says, well, let's do something a little bit different. And actually, I love this guitar. It's got the, uh, I think these are actually Koa strips up here. And it's got the Koa um, accent, if she can get in. It still needs to be glossed out, this guitar. Uh, this is kind of done up, and it's sealed. And I kind of scotch brighted it down. It, the lacquer's been on in a couple months. I, and so we got the nice Koa heel block, and the tail is is a little Koa too. So we're sporting off that guitar. The the work on this kind of spurred this because I thought, well, I'm going to have to wind me a a thing, a a P90 pickup like uh, Vaughn did, and then I decided, well, hey, I just have the Seymour Duncan. 
but it was a hot one and the P90s being different, it came in at 12K. I don't have the wire stripped back right now or I could, you know, put the meter on it and show you. Okay, so I guess here's the machine. Now this is, so every, everyone's machine costs a lot of money, $500. $50 a spool of wire, uh, just and everything else, Matt, it, it can add up entry level to a lot of money. I think the Shatton build it yourself was like $300, right? And so, um, and then the Mojo Tone Super Rig, you know, the, every, all the digital stuff, um, it's five. But we found this guy on the internet. It's a U.S. solid. And you, if you can check it out, here's the counter on it. And it came with this crank. Now, w when we got it, me and my friends and Mark and Colleen, uh, we had little stopwatch deals to see how many we could get, you know, in one minute. And Mark did 16, Colleen did 14. I don't think, and this thing it says maximum speed, to 2,000 RPMs. Well, this thing is plastic gears. There's no bearings in it. It's got a little bit of jiggle, and I don't, I don't run it at two grand. That's for sure. So we have. I'll spin it around. It's kind of warm now. We've run these pickups. This is a little Singer sewing machine, and this is off a really old, um, an old machine. I'm glad I didn't throw it away because everyone in, goes into my shop and garage and they all go, wow, you got a lot of junk. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of homemade crap. This is some homemade crap. I love this. This is, and I'm really happy with these pickups so far. Um, Samanco, I, I can't say it right, but it's a Singer sewing machine. You know, we, we did it. Uh, we got the belt from Singer basted it to this board. This was, it says, a handshake electric. So this was meant to be uh, an, an electric wind a kind of spool. I could take this off and put it here, but this is geared so tight right here that, man, that thing would be flying. So direct drive, I do this by my hand. But anyway, it's work great. Okay, here's the counter. And you really got to jack with this thing. Oh, look at that for the video. Look at, we're back on one. So we're doing good. I had my friend Mark, he cut this off and he machined us these beautiful, beautiful uh, spools here. There, This is for a P90 right here. And uh, this obviously is for the Stratocaster that we just did. And um, so, you know, with a little bit, so I paid $28 for this winder. It says U.S. Solid, that's where you can find it, made in China. So what did we do? Hey, we did an abacus, right? How about that? Had to do it, little art project. Got the University of Hawaii art degree. So we did the abacus. So we keep track of things, you know how I know? There's three, right? And I got three pickups. Go figure, right? That's it. And these are the guides right here. These are the standard guides that you'll find on a Mojo Tone or a Shat. Now I'm going to go a little bit quick. This is going to be kind of lengthy, and I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. Or, you know, I don't really care. Um, Because I don't want to edit this. On our videos, we have this Canon camera. It's a, the one shot or the hot shot. And we just use the, uh, you know, the microphone on it. And it has a noise gate. Because when I play guitar on it, any of the guitar videos that I did, um, you can see the sound comes up and down. So it has a noise gate adjustment. But we're just doing this, and I don't want to edit this video. This is going to be a one-shot deal. And I, I don't know if she can kind of tune in on that. And all the other videos I'd seen, they, uh, they have the coppery wire. 
Well, this stuff's fifty dollars a roll, so I bought the vintage because I want an old vintage kind of sound. I, I go for that more. I'm old Fenders. I build the Tweed amps, you know, the Ramblin' Pony amps, and we got a stack of those coming up, and they're basically just old Tweeds, Tweed Princetons. We put a little twist on them, and Deluxes. And yeah, that stuff like that. So this is a good wrap on these. We were really kind of very happy. This, unfortunately, that's what happens. Um, it's it's so much fun that you want to buy some more bobbins. We're like, hey, yeah, man, I can't wait to do the Firebird ones because they're they're different and they got a degree of difficulty. So. I, I would have to say, in doing this, this machine worked great. I have this old rheostat. I chose to use this so I could use this as a knob and use and and you know do my hand guiding. And for those of you who might be a little bit paranoid about hand guiding, you know, it, it we didn't break a wire on the first one. My girlfriend Colleen, she did. My lady friend, she busted out another one. Perfect, really good. So the wire is a little bit tougher than you think, you know, and, and it works. You set your spool on the ground like they say, and so this is it, the winder. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank this up, and but here you go, and that's going pretty fast. I mean, I don't think I wound that fast. This is only between 60 and 70 volts too. If I crank this thing up, you know, it'll come apart, so we don't even want to do that. But anyways, $28. And then, you know, I patched everything else together. You can get a sewing machine motor or what kind of motor you want, you know, modern or old, but this, so this was pretty cool and it works. And I'm very, very super happy with these. Um, when we get that strap done, it's been sitting on my bench, and it's in some of my other pictures. But, uh, oh, yeah, now i got these pickups for it. Okay, so about strats and the pickups. So if my uh, lady friend can kind of pan over to the couch here. Here, we're going to plug this. This is the Benedetto we made. And, you know... Hello! They're just they're just kind of cool, these these big acoustic arch tops, but they have this jazz flourish. The third one that we built was a D'Angelico, and it was off Stephen Stills' a Prince. I did this in my other video, so if you see that, those are in it. But this is done, so I'm kind of plugging it. I have it flat down, and, and I actually brought it home because I dropped the action, and I have I'm not a jazz player. So, I tuned it down to D and started playing like a bunch of, you know, the River Bonamassa and a bunch of slide Milk Cow Blues on it. And my girlfriend, she just says, man, it just freaks me out to see you do that on that guitar. It's just, but that's probably what I want to do. So we're having a thing, we started running this, is to save this jazz box from Ellis. So you, you got to pay a lot of money <laughs> to get it. <laughs> but you can save it from being my blues box. I, I, I have that one. Okay, I digress. While I'm digressing, I'll go ahead and plug this. I have, I have a few guitars, but this one really, really, really is a super favorite. My dad sent me this Alder, and we just got this... Uh, this is obviously is the Esquire, so we got the uh, pickup system from Emerson and just dropped it in, and it is super fantastic. And I built this guitar off my 72 Tele. I had a 72 Tele and, you know, copied the neck kind of verbatim, so it's that little D shape. But I'll tell you what, boy, I sure do love this guitar. It's, it's a Fender Broadcaster pickup. It might even be a Seymour Duncan. I think this is a Seymour Duncan broadcaster in it. But just with the Emerson kit, I, we started going with Emerson. They're expensive. Thanks, Mitch. And, uh, yeah. 
So here's a Strat. So this is a made in Japan Strat that I've had for years. I bought it off the wall at Guitar Center 30 years ago. I didn't realize that they were such a spitting image of a 1960 Strat. It's an alder body. And I have, these are the original pickups. I shot at this blue. Underneath it's a sunburst something, which is, you could barely see it on something right through here. But I shot at this blue because Monster Mike Welsh had one. But I didn't realize it was really a knockoff. It's a slab board. This is a slab board on it from when Fender changed hands and they told Japan that we want to build these three retro guitars like this in Japan, started, jumped on the gun and started uh, knocking them out. So if you can find a, a made in Japan uh, 90s, this was originally a photo flame. I left the headstock photo flame at the behest, my lady friend, but this was this is the uh, neck. So this is like before the custom shop, but it's really like a 60s slab board. I didn't really even know all that stuff about the slab board stuff, so, but this is it. But anyways, all those pickups ride in at about 6, 6.1, and they're all even. 6.1s. So these, this is a 77 and this is a 79 and this one they're all about 5 point what do we think? They're, yeah they're about 5.7 and so they're not that, that blistering. This guy is one I built it's an alder. My dad sent me the, the, the alder and I love it, and you know it's a '50s finish uh, with the big head stock and stuff. But these were some Fender Fat '50s, but they're all just about six. They're they're this, they're a little bit over six, you know, six point two or three or something like that. And so, yeah, we had you know a lot to look at. We went ahead and kind of uh, copied what. Um, what Eric Coleman was doing off his uh, 63 Strat. <sighs> okay, well, um, here she could zoom in on this too. If you can see, that's actually clicking. That's part of our home studio. That's the outboard gear. This is a, the Golden Age 73, so it's like a, a Neve uh, 73 style. Um, preamp right here. It's got some some high pass filter stuff and a, it has a low Z switch and a, it has a parallel in and out and then um, here you can get it to rock a little. But here's a compressor too the, that goes with it and it's going through an EQ. We have that as an outboard to our Mac recording system. Um, but I, I don't use it. I, I, I don't use it. Uh, I haven't. We have some nice microphones. You know, we, we've got some condensers and we have this. And actually I bought a really nice ribbon mic. One of the big golden age um, active ribbon mics. But uh, we just use GarageBand. And I have Pro Tools on this, and I've got Logic X Pro, but I still have three albums up, and I just use GarageBand, and I love it. And, you know, I have all kinds of amps and stuff, and it's kind of ironic that I'm doing this strap because, actually, I just put all the strats away, and on this last album, I says, I'm just using Telecasters and this Gretsch. You know, and so it was a little bit, strats go away. Okay. This is Django Radio, and this is our radio station. So if you go to Bruce King Band, or if you're interested, it's free online radio. You know, you just go there, you click it, and we have a, a station. My right there. And it's mixed in with a lot of other people. So those of you who haven't heard about Django Radio, so now here's Coco Montoya's coming up next, 
and I forget here. Oh, this is Aaron. Aaron Brown. Hello, Aaron. We have him up on. Um, he's our friend from Cape Town, South Africa. And he's on Django. He's on our station. Uh, so I just thought I would just whoop that in because it, it's, a, it's a. Here's Tab Benoit now. We love this guy. And what is this? Oh, nice and warm, yeah. We're loving Tap Benoit. And actually, they did have a couple kits for the, uh, you know, the 72, 74 thin line Telecaster pickups. They had a couple kits, but they used an off magnet on those. So I don't know if you can find those actually, but, you know, they were the big Fender humbuckers. And that's what Tab plays. And, all those guitars are four grand, you know, and I really want them. I'd love them. <laughs> okay, well, I think um, that that's going to be it. Definitely uh, check us out on Django. And here it is, the, uh, the uh, Wizard Winder here. I'm not going to go in. If you, if you want to see how to close out one of these, you can go to the Eric Coleman uh, pickup wind video. He he's works for Stu Mac, and and you can see it. Basically, we're gonna pot them. I, I have a little can over there of some paraffin wax, and um, we had already wound these right here, and and we have the specs on them right here. So we know this one's we wound it in the middle. You know, so we we basically know how it's gonna turn out and then we put a little safety band on them and pot them and yeah cool so we know that one's going to be the middle one um, but here's the winder and put your hair up so you don't get it caught in there like my little brother did monkey on a drill and I, I think that can do it right so uh, thanks a lot and it, maybe she can zoom in here and get a couple pictures of this I saw this guy he was doing harmonica rewinding harmonica uh, coils and a friend of mine wants is kind of interested in me doing that and but he was doing it on a drill so I've seen people do it on drills and and different things but this was kind of a, a little bit more $28 at US solid and then whatever you can come up with to uh, to uh, make the thing run and get an abacus from China. Okay. We're going to let that go. Bye-bye. Hello, Al.